Wow. Our God, he is alive and from dust he created man. And we, we kind of know that, don't we now? We're, uh, I'm going to take this off because we're fully vaccinated. So we're excited about that. Symbolic gesture on our part there with the mask. And, um, you know, it's great. To, it feels good, doesn't it, to be around people, to see the parking lot mostly full, to have food outdoors, a little reception. Normal's okay, isn't it? I used to think that song, I want to go to church on the Christian radio, was kind of corny. I kind of like it now. But it's good to see you church people. You know, less people are going to church. And uh, it's good. I found a suit. It's good to be, good to be back in church. <laughs> good to see Rick Ballou on stage playing his bass guitar. Great to see Heidi and Andy Pilcher serving as always. And so many others, and Michelle, who I got a hug from today, and she's still running the show. So that's awesome. You know, what are we doing here? Um, that's a good question. Appreciate you asking. Um, we have a couple of guys resigning, do we? Do we have some people retiring? Let's use the word transitioning. Because sometimes we're not that good at transitions. A healthy church could probably handle transitions pretty well. A life is full of transitions, is it not? And so I hope we can learn as a people to do good in these things. We, um, you know, to handle transitions with grace and respect for one another. The, um, and when I say transitions versus resigning or retiring, it's because they're kind of moving into other ways of serving. That's Harold Carmen back here and Bob Keene. For example, Harold and Suzanne, along with Carl and Donna Lynn and the Omens and some others, are doing the daytime salt ministry, which is mostly retired people, I think. And people keep asking me when I'm going to retire. I don't know if they're asking that because they want me to quit being an elder or I'm looking older or some reason. But anyway, uh, and Bob and Adrian back here, both servant leaders, you know, are uh, serving in the uh, West Cobb ministry. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. You know, this is basically a tribute and a little thanks to you all. And uh, thank you so much. And we love you. And, you know, in Matthew 25, verse 19 to 23, there's a passage there on talents and gifts where it says, God entrusts us with talents and gifts and opportunities to develop and serve. And some of those are in leadership. And I want to let you know, you all have proved trustworthy. And it talks about well done, good and faithful servants. And those are great words to remember and to let resonate in our minds, your minds in particular. And then it ends with the comment that says, God is happy with you. And so we as a church also are happy with you, but more importantly, happy for you and grateful for you. You know, Harold and Suzanne serve as peers for some of us who are a little older, but also kind of parental models as well, because they have grandchildren that are getting baptized, going to college, marrying in the Lord, even coming up fairly soon, early August. Uh, and so they serve as role models, don't they, for all of us. And I love that picture we put up here before that shows about 20 in their family of you know, all ages and just a beautiful picture. I think it's one that we all would like to see in our own lives. So your legacy of faith lives on. Bob and Adrian, you know, both servant leaders, as I said, and, and Adrian, thank you for giving Bob new energy and actually encouraging him to serve a little longer. I think he wanted to step out about three years ago. And so thank you for doing that. He now sort of shuffles into the Monday night leadership group meeting and then dances out. And so, but on a, and you did that when you were dating too. And, but Bob, you and I have been serving together for 25 years, both at the Atlanta church and in the North River Church of Christ, not to mention being baptized so many years ago. And so it's just such an honor and a pleasure, and I respect you so much and love you so much. And uh, we do have a, a uh, small gift, a token of appreciation for you lovebirds and um, you four. And we, it's basically, you know, enough to get you to a mountain cabin and buy some barbecue for dinner, you know, which is good. And, uh, and we'll, we'll give that to you uh, shortly. But uh, anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well done, good and faithful servants. Uh, thank you that you're moving and continuing to serve, moving into other areas of the church. And we need your presence, we need your example, your role model, and help us develop the next generation of leaders. You know, I mean, that's, we, we're doing that fairly well, but specifically help us with that 
And uh, we'll all work on that together because uh, we're raising up the 30s, 40s, and 50s to serve and lead, lead the church as well. John Dracote is going to share some exciting news as well. Well, carrying on with the theme of uh, transitions and roles, uh, I am an elder here and have been for a few years, also serve on the board for the last three years and have renewed the term for the next three years. Um, and also have been serving as board president for the last two years. And it is a, a great honor and privilege for me to, today to talk about a shift there in that particular role. Now you may ask yourself, well, what's the board about? Uh, we're a nonprofit corporation uh, here in the state of Georgia. That's a good thing for us, uh, but that means we need a board. Uh, our leadership group and eldership serve in an ecclesiastical role. And so uh, in cooperation with our ministry and our admin, the board takes on those topics that are more financial, legal liability, all that kind of stuff to help keep us, you know, healthy and in a good state in those particular things. So because of that, uh, the nine members that we have on the board, we particularly look for people who have a financial, a legal, an operational background because that's the charge that we have in order to, to support our efforts here at the church in this highly cooperative role that we have among the different groups. Um, we pay attention uh, and try and, and, and have our board members be a cross-section of our church, and so we have variance in age. We have variants, in, we have uh, both genders, we have uh, differences in ethnicity, and that's just an effort on our part to try and in some sense, capture some of the diversity that we have here at North River. So as I mentioned, been serving uh, as board president for the last two years, and we have an election. So the board elects its own officers, and it is uh, giving me great Honor to announce to you today that Mike Wyatt, who is serving as board president, I'm sorry, board vice president, will be taking on the role of president for the next two years. And uh, amen. One of the reasons why that's really good news for us is uh, having worked with him uh, in his current role, and we're both on the finance team, uh, he is uh, uh, a talented, capable person. Uh, he has served on other boards in, in a financial role as well. And on top of that, he spent good part of his career with T. Rowe Price working in the stable asset fund area as a leader there. So with that in mind, I would like to give Mike a chance to say hi, and he is going to lead us in a prayer for our contribution at the end of that. Well, thank you all. Thank you, John. It's uh, an honor and a privilege to be the new president of the board. I feel like I've got big shoes to fill. John has done a tremendous job in leading the board over the past couple of years. Some of you may know that in my youth, I was a runner. And it feels to me now like John is passing the baton to me. And all I have to do is maintain the lead and not mess up. <laughs> so that's what I hope to do. But we have a tremendously talented board. Uh, there are so many gifts that, that the board members have given, and they, they sacrificially are willing to give those gifts back to North River. And I'm honored, like I said, to be a part of the board, to serve with them, and hopefully and prayerfully in the, in the future, good things are to come. Uh, speaking of running, as you know, this is the season of giving. The season of giving is not a sprint, it's a marathon. We haven't yet reached our goal, but we still have a ways to go, and prayerfully we are running toward that, that end result. So as we, as we pray this morning, let's give some thought to, to who we are and what we are. We are, everything that we are, everything that we have comes from God. It is a gift that he expects us to use wisely. So that encompasses our giving. This is the season of giving and as we pray, let's, let's think about our responsibility to give back what God has given to us. Let's pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful, honored, humbled to be able to serve in your kingdom. We're grateful for all that you've given to us. You've given us so much, more than we can count, more blessings than we know, more blessings than we're even aware of. I just pray that we have a heart, a desire to give back a portion of what you give to us, that we remember that everything that we have, everything that we are, comes from you because of your blessings. I pray that we have a desire to make a difference with the giving that, that we give, with the gifts that we give, with the funds that we share with others whose needs are greater than ours. We have an opportunity and a privilege here at North River to touch the world. And I just pray that through our giving, we have a desire to do that. We love you. We're grateful to be in this place where we can give. We pray these things in your son's name. Amen.